Welcome, my friends. I noticed a little bit of voice call rubbing a short while ago with this Mission 781 speaker. It's the one that hasn't been reconed, so it's rather damaged, as you can probably tell. I've just revulcanized the rubber We're by using a vulcanization cement, well, a sort of a vulcanization stuff. It's good for speakers like this, and I've also redone the voice coil, straightened it out. And now, if I was to play a song through it, so if I just go to a song, here's one. It sounds nice now. It sounds a lot bassier. See? And that's basically just a preview of how this is actually doing and its performance. I will have a different one of the 781 performance um, another time where it will probably knock this camera off of the laptop which is here. It will probably knock the camera off there anyways because of the honestly earth shaking bass that these speakers produce. Even though these drivers aren't that big. I mean, a uh, good, what, three, four inches? Actually, on one, two, three, four inch. Yeah, these are about. Hang on. So these are about a two inch either end. So these are a four inch driver. Um, that's actually in these speakers. Even though it's only a little four inch, one hundred watt, six ohms driver, it's very, very powerful. It's even got its own base part in the magnet. For God's sake, I mean. I'd show you, but I haven't got an Allen key, but I might be able to get it open anyways. Let's try this. Let's try... Nah, it won't open with them. But I basically have to straighten out the voice coil in that speaker to get it to sound like this. Instead of... And um, touching that when the glue's still damp on the dust caps. Not a very good idea, but that rubber glue is rather dry-ish. I've done my best to repair this speaker instead of recoiling it like I did that one over there. Simply because that co was, um, the original voice coils in this speaker alone were in good condition. Uh, the other speaker, which is that one, um, over there. Basically the voice coil was beyond repair. I tried to repair it and the whole thing just disintegrated. Completely just snapped. Because basically there's like four holes in the uh, voice coil body itself yeah, for the bod and the voice coils are literally like an inch, two inches long and they go into a massive magnet like that and um, basically what had happened is I tried to re-bend the, co the coil to uh, re-accommodate itself balance itself out and get itself back into the right place I shimmed it started pulling around the metal just to try and straighten it out and get a new edge on it and basically as soon as I did I played a bit of music through it and what had happened is the whole voice coil had snapped free from the cone and spider assembly which left me with a very sticky situation which was to repair this one and leave the other one untouched for about 10 weeks after about 10 weeks I've managed to spend 160 quid and I have had a professional recon kit put on this. I recon this one myself. It's a very good 
uh, repair. They're very expensive cones, though. Very, very expensive for such a small driver. Well, they're not exactly that small. I mean, take a look at my hand against it. It's not that small, but they're relatively small compared to most. But yeah, these are four-inch drivers. They're pretty powerful for the size. They can check a floor no problem easily. All you need is the right equalizer or a base system. All that. That little black beauty up there is more powerful than that. Believe it or not. That's 120 watts. That's just 40. <laughs> so there's a lot more power there, and it runs 8 ohms. These are actually 6 ohm speakers, so I'm not expecting to last much longer on that um, amplifier. But then again, I could always get 6 ohm, re 8 ohm recones for them. But yeah, I'm just been taking a look around the eBay and stuff like that. I can't find any other recone kits other than the one that I spent on the other one to have this one done with. If I did have enough money, I would buy another one of those recon kits. But as it stands, I'm pretty much stripped for cash. Just the same as the PC over here is pretty much stripped for processor power supply. Well, processor power supply and hard drive burnt out on that. I'm now going to have to spend some money having that done before I can get to work on the speaker. But now that I know exactly what size driver I'm after, again. I will be able to uh, work that out within a matter of minutes. So I'll be able to open eBay and uh, get to work on it another time. So thank you for watching this. And before you disappear off to another video of either mine or someone else's, there is something else I would like to show you. I'm currently doing a small project as well because I got a little bit bored earlier. I decided I would use a heat sink with duct tape. There's a reason for the heatsink and duct tape over here with a cooling fan on the back of it that's not really stuck on very well. And that is a very simple, very, very uber uncomplicated thing. I have managed to grab hold of a million and one MOSFETs uh, from an old computer power supply, which is the one that came from my PC that burnt out, and basically taken the heatsinks off with them and put them inside here so it looks a bit like a hairdryer gone wrong but still but there's basically MOSFET here then there's two tran uh, not transistors sorry um, two diodes here microwave size I believe these can take up to about 50 kilovolts and then there's uh, another MOSFET here MOSFET here here and here I'm going to be working on those to create a ZVS driver to run um, basically try and get this to work I can just get this in your view. Uh, basically, I've just been creating a uh, ZVS unit. I've been having a look at how they're wired up and how you run them. And I'm um, basically going to be trying to uh, run this um, coil on one to try and get some power out of it. Try and get at least a thousand volts. Try and turn it into a flyback transformer. It's not going to be an easy task because I haven't got that much wire, but I'm going to have it professionally wound by a transformer builder and it will take them about five minutes since they've got all the right winding tools but anyways back to the matter at hand I have a dead hard drive yeah I know that's not very convincing so far but here's that dead hard drive you can not you notice I've scratched the plate the platter and I've also put some tape onto it there's a reason for all this tape and all these wires and all that crap hanging out and I'm going to show you that now I basically just modified a hard drive, removed the logic board because that was what burnt out on the drive, not just the head stack, but the whole thing just died, apart from the motor. Luckily, I managed to salvage the motor, and I'm using it for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my power supply, which is right here, which is a little damaged. So I'm going to remove the second connection, and I'm going to use what I've got here. So I'm going to just give it a good old 12 volts at uh, 4 amps and that should be roughly enough to get this motor going so let me just connect the power and now that the power's connected you can see it wants to spin up anyways as you can see so I'm going to try and spin this up at full power in 3 2 1 go As you can see, it's spinning it up there, so.
Let's try and get it going properly again. There's a certain direction that the motor actually prefers to run, and it's very difficult to get it to run in that direction once you actually have it running, it's good. There we go, look. the other thing I wanted to show you but if anyone can actually send me in any diagrams for building a ZVS MOSFET unit I'll be more than happy to uh, take those in and use them uh, to my advantage because I do want to make that flyback driver so I believe this is where I have to leave you and um, I hope to have another video and the next video I'm hoping will be me with a MOSFET and of course a ZVS flyback driver. Oh yeah! So, I'll leave you on this note. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, rate and comment. And I hope to see you in my next video.